it's including sports and entertainment. Now, the Kwesibo Tree led committee has suggested a peace building and healing tour the National Democratic Congress as part of its eight point recommendations. The 13 member committee today presented its report to the party after almost six months of work. The 455 page report recommended, amongst others, a credible group to tour the country as part of brokering peace in the party. The report further urged the party to take steps to restore the integrity of the biometric register and expanded electoral college. The committee also wants a restoration of the party's grassroots participation and improvement in the party's collation machinery. The report, which also contains an executive summary, again recommended steps to be taken to strengthen research and intelligence in the party. We have produced a report that actually uh, does the job of identifying all the factors, uh, weighing them carefully, categorizing them, synthesizing them, and understanding the real dynamics in each and every one constituency. Um, it's a, it's a, it's, I think it's a good thing for the party. Party General Secretary Asiru Nketia told TV3 News the party would immediately sit to digest the report and come out with appropriate steps to correct the wrongs of the party. There are times where you have a committee whose recommendations may not flow from the findings of fact. So we will look at that one, that whether the recommendations are flowing from the findings of fact. If that is the case, then we will come out to clearly accept the recommendations for implementation and then lay out um, the strategies for uh, implementing the recommendations. The attack. The Kokrobite District Police Commander DSP Simon Agbodeke affirmed the police is yet to make an arrest. Apologize for the sound hitch there. Still on that story, calm has returned to Oshie in the Ga South municipality after Sunday afternoon's bloody chieftaincy clashes. But health workers in the community have abandoned post for fear of another attack. The Kokrobise District Police Commander DSP Simon Agbodeke affirmed the police is yet to make another arrest. These linked Sunday's chieftaincy clashes to a decade-long dispute in the community. More than 10 people were injured in the latest clashes. Patrick Ikrofo, a non-resident who plies his trade in the community, sustained knife wounds and had to be rushed to the hospital for medical treatment. Some residents who were not involved in the feud were alleged to have been subjected to severe beatings while some property were also destroyed. Most of the residents, we were told, have fled to seek refuge in nearby communities. Healthcare workers manning this chips compound have abandoned post. The perpetrators have since gone into hiding. They just gave us the name, but it is their responsibility to lead us to the places of abode of those uh, suspects. We have a patrol team there. The regional headquarters has also supported us with patrol team. So at the moment, the community is calm. Sunday's incident is the second in two weeks. Hello again. We apologize to all our viewers for uh, the sound production there. There's something wrong with uh, our sound production. We apologize for that. Now let's continue with the news, the story that we were bringing you before we got into that problem. And uh, prosecutors in the case involving seven accused persons in the major Maxwell Mahama trial case in Cape Coast have discontinued the case. The move is to allow the transfer of the case from Cape Coast to Accra. 
The seven accused persons or residents of Dinja Boase were arraigned on a provisional charge of murder on June 1 at the Cape Coast District Court, which remanded them into police custody to allow for further investigations to the case. When the case came up in court Monday morning, police prosecutors announced the Police Central Intelligence Department, where this headquarters in Accra, has taken over the case, hence prayed the court to discharge the accused persons. Counsel for the accused persons, George Bernard Shaw, did not approve the request by the prosecution. However, he told the court the assemblyman William Barr has a head injury and prayed the court to order the prosecution to give him medical attention. The court, in view of the prosecution's request, discharged the seven persons and struck out the case. Discharging the accused persons, the judge Rita Amanyuwa Edusa questioned why five of the accused persons were brought to court without having shoes on, but they informed the court that they were arrested barefooted. The judge also ordered that the assemblyman and one other who also had a leg injury, as well as all others who may require health care, be given medical attention. In other stories this evening, tension is mounting at Chebi Apepem in the East Achim municipality following the instalment of another chief in the town. Our Eastern Regional Correspondent Yvonne Nikwe reports pupils had to stay away from school after the firing of gunshots on Monday morning. Schools did not have lessons Monday morning. The instalment of another chief had turned chaotic. One faction reportedly made an unlawful entry into the school, compelling management to send the pupils home. These teachers were also packing out. One faction claims the instrument was illegal and not traditionally accepted. The assemblyman for the area, Samson Bosompem, at the time of filing this report said the security agencies were yet to respond to their distress calls. We gathered three years ago, Nana Pokumanya was installed chief of Chebi Apapim, but the Judiciary Council noted traditional rules which state that no ceremony must take place on Anuhum Day was flouted, but the chief is yet to appeal against the decision. At about 6.30 a.m. on Monday, June 19, the other faction also installed one Nana Yao claiming the Judicial Committee gave them the go-ahead. And also tonight, President Tekufado has charged judges to work with integrity and fairness to ensure effective justice delivery. Swearing in Justice Sofia Kufo as Chief Justice, he warned government will not shield anyone who falls foul of the law regardless of party affiliation. Lady Chief Justice Sofia Kufo becomes the 25th and the second woman to assume the position of Chief Justice. That I will bear true faith and allegiance. President Ikufuado said it is important the judiciary re-establishes the confidence of Ghanaians after the announced expose. It is critical for the growth of our country that we have a judiciary that commands the respect of the people by the nature of its delivery of justice as well as by the comportment of its judges. It is vitally important that we have judges who are honest possess integrity and a sound knowledge of the law. I am confident that Justice Sophia Abna Boafua Ekufu will be an effective leader of the judiciary and will guard jealously its independence. He promised government will ensure the law deals with persons who fall foul. The Chief Justice, Her Ladyship Sophia Ekufu, pledged to pursue effective measures to enhance the image of the judiciary. I'm passionate about integrity, the delivery of quality justice, and the development and stability of our nation. And we'll strive to demonstrate these passions throughout my tenure in the high office of the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana. And earlier, Parliament had unanimously approved Justice Sophia Okufu as the country's new Chief Justice. 67-year-old Justice Sophia Abenebofu Ekufo takes over from Justice Georgina Theodora Wood, who retired as a Chief Justice on June 8. Her approval followed after the Appointments Committee vetted her to test her preparedness for the position. 
the committee presented this report to the House stating that Justice Sophia Ekofu has a high standard of competence and integrity, forthrightness and independence of thought, astuteness and in-depth appreciation of the law. The committee in this report also stated that her demeanor and composure during her verdict portrays her as a patient and tolerant person. The minority leader Haruna Idrisu said the Chief Justice is competent and qualified having been appointed and served at the Supreme Court and charged her to make judicial reforms that will ensure timely delivery of justice. We should see an end where even instead of 21 days, we should see that this can be, that should be done within 7 or even 14 days instead of saying 21 days. And having filed the petition, Mr. Speaker, I strongly submit that the Supreme Court must have not more than 60 or at worst 90 days to make a determination of the matter. The majority leader said she meant congratulated the Chief Justice and supported the position that justice delivery should be fast-tracked. This nation was saved by what was done by the Supreme Court in 2013 when within a defined period we were able to deal with the petition that went to the Supreme Court. Fancy the situation that we have traveled that route, that same route. And Mr. Speaker, we should not encourage ourselves uh, any longer on that path. I agree with the minority that, that there should be a closure. And we should determine for ourselves, the Supreme Court should help us to determine what the uh, date of closure should be. Some members of the House took turns to express their views on the Chief Justice's approval. We have to make sure that we modernize the dress code of our Supreme Court judges and other judges. We should show that we are independent, we have a culture, and we should do away with those things that make us perpetually colonial people. It is my expectation and my hope that she is going to push the frontiers of social legislation and the human rights regime in this country through the kind of actions and judgments that we take in the court. Thanks for staying with us on News 360. Let's do some business now. My name is Nanikia Mensah Brampa. Starting with tonight, the Ghana Community Network Services GCNet is demanding that importers involved in diversion of transit goods from Ghana Sport to landlocked countries onto the local market be prosecuted. The company, which is investing in tracking technology to monitor trucks used in transporting the goods is hopeful the prosecution of culprits will not only serve as a deterrent but also seal the huge revenue leakages to the state in the corners of the customs division of the gra gcnet provides a technology platform to process transit goods for some landlocked countries in the sub-region through ghana sports Burkina Faso, Niger and Mali are benefiting from this arrangement as part of efforts by government to make its ports the hub of sub-regional trade. It is a very grey area for revenue uh, leakage if you don't manage it well because when you, you are doing transit, you do not pay duty at the transited country, you pay duty at the consumption country. Some unscrupulous importers colluding with truck drivers are suspected to be dumping transit goods onto the local market without paying the correct duty. We have a tax force, customs, police and GCNet and we have given them facilities that enables them to be able to identify these places. GCNet has imported about 1,000 tracking devices to install on all trucks to be used in transporting transit goods to the landlocked countries. According to GCNet, all persons arrested for diverting transit goods must not only be made to pay the correct duty, but be prosecuted to serve as a deterrent. We need to let people pay for their crimes. If you are bringing in goods and it's for local consumption and you declare it's a transit, you are not paying tax on it and you, are, you make an attempt to divert it because you say it's transit and when you are caught, you need to be punished. Right, so the driver and vehicle licensing authority is in the news again and this time around it has dismissed claims there was no consultation on the proposed new biometric driver's license. Chief Executive of the Authority, Kwesia Jimambuzia, also refuted claims the new driver's license would cost 450 cities. 
There has been a growing concern over media content in Ghana recently. Of more concern is the level of vulgarism and intolerance and hate speeches, making many to cast doubt over the country's future. An African consultant to the BBC and CNN and the chief executive of Brandcom Satellite Technology, Brandcom Satellite Network, Dr. Kukubaini, linked the worsening situation to lack of understanding and mediocrity. Human beings are buyers of information and we buy information by the things we see, we hear and we imagine or get inspired with. So if I'm looking at something and it will really teach me to not to acquire what I so desire, I think it's a game. Well, we do apologize for rolling that wrong story. They will bring you that story on the DVLA later on. But let's move on to some other issues. And Alliance Insurance Limited has awarded some outstanding Ghanaians who have been playing significant roles for the country and for themselves. This year's edition also recognized some physically challenged persons who have defied all odds to achieve their dreams. Ghana is a wholly owned subsidiary of Allianz Group, which is headquarters in Munich, Germany. The group is one of the leading insurance and financial service groups worldwide and has been active in Ghana since 2009. The Allianz Award, which is part of the values of Allianz Ghana, seek to celebrate Ghanaians who are doing exceptional in their field of work, despite the challenges that confront them. The awards were grouped in six categories. Human rights activist Bridget Sosu Perini was presented with Make a Difference category. For moving ahead, disabled cyclist Emmanuel Ofusuyebua was honored the Purpose Award. Both government and several homes and individuals, we are trying to carry disabled people from the roadside. So something like this is going to motivate us for us to do something a lot in our life. The inspirational award went to former Black Star skipper Stephen Apia for turning defeat into victory. Never ever imagined a day like this will come. But the charcoal seller son has won a white shirt today. The Beyond Boundaries category was presented to Farida Bedway. Undercover journalist Anas Arimeyao Anas was also honored with Brave Award. Deputy Managing Director of Alliance Insurance Ghana, Martin Amwa underscored the need to recognize change makers. We believe that it is going to encourage them to also put in their maximum best uh, on anticipation that no matter how small they find themselves, somewhere along the line, Alliance might cite them, pick them, and then award them. The events witnessed performances from some artists, including Sina Soul, Efia, and Manifest. Everything I want, money I want.